Hey, 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 back with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. And we were supposed to have another guest today, but we got tech issues on the other line. And honestly, I'm having some internet issues too today. So it's going to be another solo episode, but we will have an amazing guest back. Uh, we have a full slate of guests lined up for the next like 15 episodes. So enough of me, but you're stuck with me today. So we're going to talk about something um, definitely a, a hot topic these days. And it was the title of the episode for today too, growing a business in a dying industry. Now, to be fully transparent, um, we were supposed to talk about growing a business in a nursing home facility. Um, so that was <laughs> that was me with my absolutely terrible and inappropriate humor. But I hope you resonate with that if you're here with me and you can laugh at that title based on what we were supposed to talk about. Well, then we should be friends and you should keep listening. Um, so Let's let's dive in here. I do want to keep this uh, as short as possible, but we're going to talk about uh, we are going to talk about growing a business in a dying industry because I actually I did that. Um, that's the business I just sold, and I'll go through kind of the different stages of a business and what that looks like, and actually why it's the perfect time of year to talk about this. And this is like I said, it's a hot topic mostly because of the economy we find ourselves in. So. Everybody knows at this point, I think, at least you're living under a rock, that in the United States and Canada, we are in tough economic times. And it's not just our two countries, it's really around the world. So, what are we going to do about it? If you want to call it a recession, I will. I'm going to state the facts. You can believe what you want. But how are you going to make sure that you go into uh, the next year, the next 12 months with a plan to thrive and, and grow your business? You can't just go into a recession and hope that everything goes okay. Now, we're pretty deep in at this point. Uh, so hopefully, based on the past recessions we've had, uh, I don't think any of them have lasted longer than three years, and that would be a really extreme recession. Typically, they're somewhere between uh, seven and 12 to 14 months. So, you know, hopefully, the word I just told you not to use, hope, hopefully, this one isn't going to be too much longer. Uh, but there's some things we can do to shortcut a recession or at least make sure you're set up to capitalize on it. So before we get too far in, let me put this on the screen. What if.com slash navigate. We have a workshop coming up and we host these pretty often. So whenever you're listening to this, go check out this URL, what if.com slash navigate. And we're going to get you the solid foundation you need for your business to take it to the next level over your next 12 months, whether that's next year, next calendar year fiscal year, or just the next 12 months, if you know you're at a place where you're feeling a little stuck, and you don't have a path to get to that next level, I do. And Sean does. We've been there, done that. We've helped dozens of companies get to the next level, and we want to help you too for free. So go over to whatif.com slash navigate, get yourself registered, and we are super excited to see you there. Um, at the time of this recording, we have a challenge coming up in like two days. So I, we already have a killer group set up for that. We're excited to take those people through this process over the next five days and, and see where we can get their business in just one short week. But like I said, go check it out. We have one of these a month um, and we want to get you to that next level. So enough about that. Let's talk about growing a business in a dying industry um, and really talk about what is the life cycle of a business look like? And how do you how do you know where you are and how do you know where your industry is? So I'm going to pull up on my screen here. Um, this is this is a helpful graphic. And this was shared. I think I saw this at a Tony Robbins event. Um, so if the language looks familiar, I didn't create this uh, full credit to him. But this is this language really resonates with me. So if you want to pause, zoom in. I know it's a little fuzzy here. Um, you can really analyze the different stages of a business here. But why is this important? Well, you need to look at this two different ways. And I already mentioned it once, but I want to make sure you're you're fully understanding the way to read this graphic. And then I'm going to share another one after this too that's even more important. But first things first, we need to look at this two ways. First is your business in the context of your business. And second is in the context of your industry and you need to look at them differently. If we're to take an industry like uh, the hotel industry, for example, well, that is an established industry. It has been around a long time. You could even say that that industry is aging or it's in the almost right before death where it says institutionalization, 
that word is a mouthful. Um, you, you could probably say the hotel industry is somewhere in there. And we know that too, because we have a disruptor like Airbnb and Verbo, and they're coming in and they're on the other side of this, this chart. They're in the toddler, teenager, and young adult phase. They're just coming onto the scene and totally disrupting the way the hotel industry is operating. Now, before we get too far in there, if you were to start a hotel right now, whether you're going to go toe to toe with Marriott and Hilton, and you're going to be a big brand, or you're just going to start maybe uh, a, an Airbnb business, a, a short-term rental business. You could say that you're still in the same industry, but you would be at birth. So even though the industry is very well established, nothing new is coming along in terms of um, what a hotel looks like. If you were to start a business today, the industry is in aging and you are at birth. So I just want to make sure we're clear on how we're looking at this chart and how you're analyzing where you are in your business and in your industry. If you've been in business for 25 years, your business could still be in the toddler phase. It, it depends on what your business looks like, not necessarily the years in business or years of experience. And I think people get that backwards a lot of times too. So let's, let's talk about my business for a second. The one that I told you I just sold, it was a growing business in a dying industry. So how did I know that? Well, if you're looking at this chart, um, if you look at over at aging, it says breakdown begins to accelerate, state of denial, problems aren't that big. Uh, the focus on focuses on how you're the victim. You begin to attack and blame, and talented people begin to leave. Well, let's just break this wide open. Um, so, full disclosure, I won't mention the name of the business because it was sold to someone who just hasn't handled it very well, unfortunately. Um, but it was in the screen printing and embroidery or the custom merch business. Well, if you look at the the description I just read on aging, all of those things were true. You had massive big players in the industry who would fall under the talented people category and they were beginning to leave. They would sell their business to private equity funds. They would get out of the industry. Even some of the bigger consultants in the industry were, were starting to get out and look for other opportunities. And these are people who have been around forever. And this industry is not new. Technically, it could date back as far as 3,000 years ago if you wanted to classify screen printing as printing on fabric um, or, or hard goods. So this is an industry that's been around for a while. Modern screen printing has really been around since the 60s or 70s, I believe. So no shortage of experience in the industry. And then you look at where it says state of denial, the problems aren't that big. And the focus is on how you're the victim. Well, that's exactly what's happening in the industry. As soon as Amazon came in and all these print on demand in, uh, businesses came in and popped up on the scene, all the little players, all the small businesses started to play the victim card. They started to say, boo-hoo, woe is me. I can't compete with the big guys. I can't be as fast. I can't be as good. I don't have the resources, blah, blah, blah. And they're just spewing excuses left and right. Well, if that's the general consensus in the industry, then the industry itself is aging. You can see that. Um, and then you can also see one step later, uh, institutionalization. They're kept alive by systems, rules, policies, but no innovation or focus on serving the needs of the community. Um, An organization is kept alive artificially through subsidization. And basically what that boils down to is you have a lot of big players coming in, like I just said, in the Amazon print on demand, you have a lot of private equity money um, where they can kind of gobble up the little guys and just own the market, essentially. It's it's monopolization to some degree. I'm using a lot of big words today. I usually don't use these, these $10 words, um, making me sound smart, which is not true. So let's let's get away from that and, and go back to the other side of this, this chart here. Uh, so the business I had, I would say mine was in maybe the the teenager to young adult phase. Uh, it was only five years old at the time I sold it, and it was um, it definitely fit these descriptions. But the reason I knew that I needed to get out was because I looked at the industry and I said, "Hmm, the industry is on the downward trend on this chart, even though my business is on the upward trend and there's upside." It's going to be fighting a losing battle to grow this business in this industry. I knew I didn't want to take the time and the effort and the energy to 
create a new sector in the business, in the industry. So I said, okay, let me just get out. And then that's at this, at the similar time is when I met Sean and that's when we joined forces and relaunched what if into what it is today. And I could not be happier with the way that things played out. So that's the, that's something you need to be considering, especially in the economic situation that we're in right now. If you're looking at your business and your business is on the left side of this chart, you're growing, it's young, there's a huge upside for growth, but you look at your industry and it's on the right side. Well, I would honestly ask you to consider if this is something you want to be in long term. Do you want to exit? Are you at the end of your career? Are you, or are you just at the end of your wits with this business? Is it really something you want to stick out? And, you know, there, there's opportunities everywhere. If you're in my business, for example, um, I could have absolutely continued to do what I was doing, uh, continue to buy up some of the maybe aging businesses within the industry, uh, access more customer data, more automation, bigger scale, things like that. But again, the business, the industry was still dying. The industry was on the decline. It's only going to get harder to compete when the industry is dying. If it's just a business that's dying, well, we can we can revitalize that no problem. There's a million different options. But if it's the industry itself, I would take a step back personally. And I would just say, is this something I want to continue to do? Is this something I want to push forward and try to figure out? Um, or maybe even it's time to pivot. Maybe you could, and I don't really like that word. I think it's overused, but is this some is this an opportunity for you to change directions within the existing business model? You already have customers, you have access to them, you have their data, you can sell them maybe a new product or service in line with what you're currently doing, but just pivot a little bit to a different industry and change course. That would be probably a better use of your time than sticking it out until the industry actually dies. Let's think about film cameras for a minute, because that's an industry that's actually dead. Or Best Buy would be another great example, DVD rentals. You had all these companies, Best Buy, and then you even had stuff like Redbox, which made Best Buy, was a Best Buy competitor, it was way more convenient. You could rent a DVD in front of a store. You didn't have to go to a store. Well, that was still a dying industry. I don't know. I personally don't know how long Redbox was around for. I actually saw one uh, the other day, which I thought was weird, but that industry is dead. There's Netflix, there's YouTube, there's streaming platforms. There's no reason for me to ever go rent a DVD. I We just found our DVD player in our house like three weeks ago. There's no reason for this technology. Why would I try to figure out something new in this industry when it is dead? So that's what I'm talking about. Take a look at where you are. Take a look at where the industry is and, and really think about your next five to 10 years. And if this is a place where if you see the industry being revitalized, awesome. If not, maybe just call it quits, peace out and find a different opportunity. So I do want to find um, or I want to share one more chart here and that is this one the five it says the five stages of a business life cycle obviously the last chart was like 12 stages so don't worry about the number of stages but on this one in particular i want to look at the the left or the right side of the chart so you have startup growth maturity decline death the opportunity is right in the middle at maturity and this is where a lot of our clients come to us it's either uh, it's really on the left side of this graph. So it's it's startup growth and maturity. We get a couple of startup clients. We have a lot in the growth phase, but we do have a, a, some clients in the maturity phase. And this is where decisions need to be made because you can see as the, the chart continues, the graph goes down. And that is typically what will happen with most small businesses. You look at the number of, of companies who survive past one generation, it's very few. The number who survive past two generations, I could probably count like percentage points on one hand. Um, and the fourth generation, you look at companies like Coca-Cola and I don't know if Walmart technically qualifies. They, they might not be old enough, but still Coca-Cola and all these companies that have been around for literally hundreds of years or over a hundred years at this point. And it is probably, you can count the number on one hand, not just the percentage of companies. Most small businesses die within the first year, it's 50%. Within the first five years, it's 80%. And 10 years, I think it's 94 or 96%. So odds are you're not getting past 10 years in your company. I mean, technically the odds are you're not getting past one year. So kudos to you if you're already past one year or five years. But when you get to the top of this curve, 
that's when people start to get complacent and they say they believe what got me here will get me there, wherever there is. But I hate to break it to you. There is death with that mindset. There is out of business. If you have that mindset, you will not continue to grow. So let's look at the dotted lines on this graph. You can either maintain growth. That's what the successful companies do. Or you can have, you see the slight decline and then you have a rebirth. And that's what I was hinting at in the industries that were dying. It, that is one path you could take is rebirth of the company, maybe realigned into it, the industry, a sub niche of the industry or an entirely new industry. Um, and I, I honestly didn't, I haven't prepared any examples of that, but I know there are companies out there who have had rebirths. Actually, I just mentioned one, Netflix. Netflix started as a DVD rental business and they converted to streaming it was at first, it was a 50 50. It was like a hybrid split of physical DVDs and then streaming. And now it is 100% streaming. And obviously, they've grown revenue models, uh, revenue streams since then. They make their own movies now. They're, now they're in several different industries. You can see how this plays out for successful businesses. So, how does all this tie into the harmonious business architecture? You might be wondering. Well, maybe you weren't wondering, but I'm going to tell you anyway. It's very simple. Um, you need to have a structure and an architecture for your business to lean on to know what stage of a business you're in. Is your business growing, mature, declining, or dead? Hopefully it's not dead, but how can you prevent that? How can you make sure that you, whether you're mature, growing, or declining, you can get back to growth or at the very least get back to sustaining? I think that's the first step really is if you're, if you're in decline, let's sustain. Let's pause. Let's make sure we get our business level and then figure out, okay, do we want to grow first of all? Because it's going to be up to you. Not every business has to grow. It's whatever you want. But if you want your business to grow, I'd love to help you get there. And it's very simple. The first step is always navigation. If you don't have a plan to get from point A to point B, how are you going to grow? If you don't know where point B is, how are you going to get there? It's really simple. That's why I put this on the screen earlier, whatif.com slash navigate. Most of our clients don't have a point B and most small businesses don't have a point B. And that's why point B almost always ends up being out of business. And I don't want to see that happen to you. Every single time a client comes to us, no matter the size of the business, we have worked with small businesses. My partner, Sean has worked with Nike and Uber and Johnson and Johnson and more and the biggest businesses in the world. And even they get it wrong. They don't have a clearly defined navigation system. They are just too big at this point to really have that affect them. And they follow a broken business model, which is the opposite of what we teach at What If. The foundation of any good business is navigation, is that core, that compass that's going to get you from where you are to where you want to be. And we want to help you develop that. So whatif.com slash navigate. It's on the screen. Make sure you register for the workshop so we can get you past that hump and to the next level of your business. It's not going to take a whole lot. It has nothing to do with more sales, better marketing, hiring better people, outsourcing your operations. None of that. It is the last place most businesses look, which is why it's backwards. It's the first thing you need to do, whether you're starting a business, growing a business, scaling a business, or keeping a business from the grave, you have to nail your navigation. So here's what we want to do. We want to take a look at your mission, vision, core values. And I know you just rolled your eyes. Bear with me. The reason you rolled your eyes is because everybody is doing it wrong. The Fortune 500 is doing it wrong. Small businesses on Main Street are doing it wrong. And everybody in between, these three areas of your business, mission, vision, core values, are the catalyst for change and the catalyst for growth in your business. If you're not leveraging them for your business success, success and growth, you're missing the boat. We have taken a number of our clients through this process that we're going to give to you for free over the next five days. And we're going to take you through the process so that you get the results that they have being able to leverage and grow their companies at truly any pace they want. I know that sounds like uh, just some promise you hear on the internet. And I know I'm tired of those people too. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm not guaranteeing income. I'm not guaranteeing revenue growth. I'm not guaranteeing profit. But I am saying if you do this process, I've seen it. It's proven to work. And I'm not just highlighting the one or two clients who it works for. 100% of the time, it's effective. 
100% of the time. If you can't get behind something that's 100% effective, then go take a COVID vaccine. Okay, that's enough jokes for today. I've had enough. We'll see you on the next episode of Harmonious at Lunch. And we have a full slate of guests coming up. So get ready to hear some amazing stories from incredible entrepreneurs. I am super excited to meet them with you on the show. Make sure you subscribe, like, comment. We want to hear what you think about the show. And thank you for supporting. See you next time.